This is a working ship. Laundry must be done. I would just like to not catch a rubber tire. So much rope spaghetti. Mama Joe goes snorkeling. So this is an anti-theft initiative, so no one can get in our boat and sail away because <laughs> they won't know what rope does what. Almost two years ago, we left it all behind for a chance at the sailing adventure of a lifetime. It has not been smooth sailing since then, but together we are learning and laughing our way through. Our hope is that if we laugh long enough, we can make our merry way around the world. And this... This is a Millennial Falcon. How does it feel to be creeping along at two knots? It's very silent. It feels great, um, So we incredibly briefly turned the engine on for getting off anchor, just motoring forward to get off anchor. And uh, initially we already had the main up, which usually is something that catamarans do and we haven't really done before. So anyway, the main was already up before we were off anchor. Quickly motored up, turned the engine off as soon as our anchor was up, and then stay sail out. And now we're at now just uh, Sailing, creeping, shall I say, out of the anchorage at a very silent two knots. So as I might have said last week's in last week's episode, if we if we can get this down, like we both really want to stop using the motor so much, but it's very difficult to get this thing off anchor under sail to shorthanded. Um, we just sort of don't feel confident enough to do it in close proximity to other boats. So we're trying to get it down to where we put two reefs in the say in the main on anchor, hoist the anchor on the engine. And then immediately on the way back from the anchor locker, I'll raise the staysail and Kiara will kill the engine and we'll glide out of there really, really, really slowly. And then we can shake out the sails once we get clear of everyone. And that way, like, we're not over canvas no matter what happens. We have the engine to fall back on and I just think it's, I don't know, I think it's a great way to creep out of the bay, really. And how good is having blocks, blocks yeah. and tackle? Like, how good is being able to just have the main halyard just hanging out. Do you want to show people my fantastic um, halyard buying skills? So this is team blue and white and that's team red and white and uh, they all do different things and it's very difficult to know what. So this is an anti-theft initiative so no one can get in our boat and sail away because <laughs> they won't know what rope does what. <laughs> So much rope spaghetti. No, brother, look at that. Yeah, every, every piece of exposed like cabin top has it. journey and you're a double. <laughs> so we uh, had a good sail. Sail was good. We, uh, we sailed to about 500 feet off the off anchorage, um, turned the motor on, drop sails, just crept in at like three knots under a staysail and a double reefed main, and then dumped it all, hove to, dumped it all, popped the engine on and just crawled for the last 500 feet, which was really nice. Um, it was a bit unfortunate that when we turned the motor on, we <sighs> heard a different register. My car is behind the cabin being like, this again. <laughs> um, but I'm determined not to let it crush my spirits. We dove on it. Hence the wet, dishevelled hair. We changed out the old zinc, so there's a brand new zinc on there. It's clean. 
the cutlass bearing, honestly, I swear to God, the movement is less than it was. Like, every time I look at it, it gets less significant. Um, I can't fault it. I don't know. I just don't know. So all I, all I can do is just keep, keep running, keep sailing, keep trying to use the motor as little as possible. And uh, who knows, maybe that's just how it sounds. Like, it's not beyond the realm of possibility that this is just how it sounds. So, got to keep the spirits up, got to not be conservative Cornelius. <laughs> Just leaving Grand Mal. And today we're going to head up to um, Rond Island. Um, I, I'm just going to put the main up. Uh, full canvas? Yeah, go on. Pop the reef. Right. Pop the reef, watches. What are we going to catch today, Ads? I love a good mahi. We've had a pretty good fill of tuna lately. Courtesy of the locals, but I love a mahi. I would just like to not catch a rubber tyre. You can confirm that the line is plenty strong. Oh my god. Oh my god. That is my criteria today. I've definitely been reading too much Patrick O'Brien because sometimes I just dream about having crew on board just so I can say things like, all hands on deck, prepare to make sail. Man the halyards, bring the sheets. <laughs> and just start yelling and pointing. <laughs> Instead, I, I just cop it. <laughs> yeah, I only have one person to yell at and she yells back and doesn't call me captain, so. <laughs> and I end up manning the sheets and halyards anyway. Oh, we managed to fill a sail. There's our seven knots. Quick, roll out a jib while we can fill one. Smug. Maybe, perhaps. I'm having entirely too much fun right now. She's doing a wonderful job. We're getting four and a half knots out of ten knots on the or 60 degrees off the starboard bow. I'm steering with my big toe because it's so feather light. <laughs> We're flying a full canvas, got a little bit of head swell, but the motion is lovely and uh, the washing is drying up behind me. So we'll have clean undies when we arrive. <laughs> From past experience, I've learned that Karakou does not have uh, any laundry facilities. And um, so I just needed to do a wash, a couple of washes actually. So I leapt out of bed at like 6 a.m. this morning, um, went to the laundry place at uh, 8 a.m. and came back all at before 10 a.m., did some food shopping, did some other stuff, and uh, set sail around 11 ish. So I now need to dry said laundry, and we're sailing, so it's a bit hard. And uh, I've been allowed anywhere that isn't near the winches, understandably, or the sails. So that gives me that. It's been a, it's been a lovely, lovely day, but slow progress. Like we've been. Just cruising down the coast, we had a good run down the coast between quiet patches. And then I'll show you. Uh, so there's a there's a current that runs between, it runs up the coast of South America. And if I'm not mistaken, it comes out of the Amazon and sort of goes like this. And it runs up the south coast of South America and veers around into the Caribbean Sea and punches pretty hard between Trinidad, uh, Tobago and, and Venezuela, but also sort of refracts between Trinidad and Tobago and uh, Grenada. And sort of right now we're passing, we're trying to make heading, we're trying to make easting between Ronde and Grenada. And so there's this sort of half a knot to one knot current fighting against us pretty much. So it can be 
a little bit of a tedious run because you've uh, you usually smash. Today we've got a northeasterly breeze, a easterly current or a westerly current, I suppose you call it, um, and so it's all kind of stacked against us. We're still making way, but we're sort of we're on a we've got an 18 knots, a full canvas. We're 45 off the wind, and we're just doing like three to four knots where we should be doing four and a half, five. Um, but still, it's a beautiful day, there's not a cloud in the sky. We're going to make it just after last light, I think. And, um, and touch wood, there's been no problems and none will rear their ugly heads when we have to do the last little bit. Um, yeah, it's been a really, really nice run. Oh, blinding myself. I'm sure very much after I see my hair in this video, I'm going to regret filming right now. But needless to say, we uh, we have arrived. Um, it's about 7.30ish and we had a nice little welcome wagon. Um, so it, it is in some way a good way good to travel with other people because um, a few people in the Anchorage when we left, they also left the same time, the same day and they're here and they were noticing that we were arriving at night time and they asked whether they wanted, uh, whether we wanted them to just find a, a little bit of a spot to anchor in, which was very, very nice of them. So they hopped out in the dinghy and uh, went and found a sandy spot for us, shining the light out, and, come over here, come over here, which was really, really helpful on a, um, on a nighttime kind of sail. We did end up obviously arriving a little later, but it's fine. But yeah, overall that was a um, that was a very good sail, and it was a really nice day of sailing. It was good to kind of it was a nice remembering the ropes again kind of a thing. Um, so so yeah. we've uh, we've good. just woken in uh, Rond uh, on Rond Island, just anchored off Rond Island, and it is a it's pretty spectacular. We must have blown past it three times in the last two years because um, we've always been on the way to Grenada or on the way back to Karikou to haul out or to get some widget and we've just never stopped um, but this time we gave it heaps of time we still arrived in the dark but we left from uh, the northern end of Grenada and just did the I think it's seven, eight, no it's 20 miles near enough 20 miles from where we were to here we did it in six, seven hours and just just really had a nice sail so we're we're snugged up on shore as you can see it's a little bit rolly, but we're thinking about moving up into this little culvert here. Craig's just up there doing a bit of a recce now, checking it out. Um, so we may move up into this uh, this cove here where it's a bit more sheltered. And uh, yeah, today's plan is to go and hit the water and explore. Uh, apparently there's some good diving around the place. But first, I do believe Kiara is making banana pancakes. our pancakes we have moved just 100 feet away just so that we're a little more in a protected area and uh, we're not on a lee shore and we're all set as in our anchor is all set not going anywhere time for a snorkel i think i feel a bit like a farmer joe in boots in my my farm look my a hat. bit like farmer joe farmer joe goes snorkeling farmer Throw everything in. Tie it to something first. Yeah, tie it to the boat first. How good is this bay though? Look at yeah, that it's beach. Seriously, it's like uh, wavy Palm tree lined beach. It's an absolute rip roaring current along here, so we pull the pin on this spot. We're going to try to find somewhere a little less violent.
been snorkeling for about a good hour now and uh, I think we're all a bit tired, a bit hungry. We might head back to the boat, have some lunch. How was that, Ads? Such good visibility. The visibility and like just the life and like, also it's a really good sort of topographical range. Like it goes from like really nice shallows to just huge ledges. So you can kind of catch for everyone. Very cool. So it's, the sun is almost setting and uh, we thought we'd come to the beach and make a bit of a fire, uh, have a few drinks and watch the sunset. Always on, always on my mind and way out of my league. Classic Wookiee behavior. Everybody else, kindling. Chewy, tree. <laughs> Go. Oh. 